maybe you can guess what I was doing for my Thursday afternoon. Yep, went up there to Dallas and got that squared away. It's definitely a good feeling. Kind of feels like maybe we're just starting to get things back to normal. Well, here's what's going on across Texas. Even though we've got clear, sunny skies, we've got a compact Pacific system coming out of the Rockies. And there it is, the surface low located in the Gaiman area with a cold front actually coming far south into southern New Mexico. And of course, the dry line right out ahead of it. We can look at this on the surface plots. And there it is. You can see the winds swirling into the panhandles right there. Northwesterly winds in New Mexico, west winds in the Texas panhandle, and north winds in Colorado. And that's a cool wind with temperatures in the 50s. And you get all the way back towards Colorado Springs, and it's actually in the mid-30s. The warmest air located, looks like around Borger, also Childress, pretty close to that dry line, and we can go ahead and draw all the features. There's the low pressure area. Looks like the dry line pretty much runs right down the cap rock. The cold front, it's going to be running about like that. And then the warm front, a little bit further north than I thought. Well, actually looking at the plots, might have to bring it kind of like that. But it does look like it extends up into eastern Kansas, where we have some very warm temperatures. So I'm going to go kind of like that for the positioning. Let's go down the dry line, and we can probably catch a little bit of that cold front. What you'll notice is that when we transect this from east to west, we hit the warmer air right behind the dry line. Temperatures in the low 80s, you can see some dust being kicked up, but then they drop off from 81 down to 77 and down to 73. That's an indication that we're probably getting back into the cold air mass. So it looks like that cold front may be running something like that. Because typically, if this was all in the dry sector, temperatures would be in the upper 70s to low 80s. This is actually a fairly cool air mass. So that's something to keep in mind when you're analyzing weather during the springtime. The dry line, let's locate that. It's a definitely a very dry dry line. And you can see the, dry, the dew point temperatures back behind it, teens and single digits, but out ahead of it, only 40s. So moisture is definitely a problem this afternoon. And let's look at that moist sector across Texas. 50, 51 there at uh, Del Rio, way to the south. Yep, that's the moisture coming in, and there's just not much of it. 45. That isodrosotherm is going to run something like that. And then the 40 degree isodrosotherm just very roughly up into Oklahoma City. So we're obviously not going to support any severe convection on a day like this. But things are certainly very dynamic with winds gusting up to 35 knots at Lubbock with dust. There's the visible imagery. We've certainly got forcing. Lots of mid and upper level clouds right there, right along the dry line, but very little in the way of low cloud. I'm not really seeing a low cloud field at all. This is mostly altocumulus layers with some patches of cirrus and uh, maybe some high clouds in the 20 to 25,000 foot range. Right around Lubbock here, you can see that dust being kicked up right there. At the very end, that's it. Not much of it. And then further out to the west, that looks like some lift along that cool front coming out of Colorado. And out around Branson and out in the Arkansas Ozarks, some forest fires. Yeah, those are showing up pretty well. Yep, there it is with the county overlays. That looks to be just west of Clinton, back towards just north of Fort Smith, somewhere in that area. Well, nothing on Twitter about those fires, and 
The news stations don't have anything either in Arkansas, so who knows? So, looking at this, I might be inclined to fix the locations of these fronts. And putting in those fronts, I think it's probably going to be a little bit more like that. Yeah, 69 there at El Paso, it's dropping, even though it's mid-afternoon. That's going to be the Pacific front coming through. And then the warm front... Yeah, I'm going to go with a placement, something like that. There's the observation sequence at El Paso, and it looks like the frontal passage took place right around here. You can see those winds gusting out of the west up to 29 knots. Typically, that's not something we see behind the dry line at 8 in the morning. So that's going to be the Pacific front, and then the afternoon just dominated by very gusty conditions, 23 gusting to 34 knots on the last observation with a dew point of 14 Fahrenheit. So where does that leave us in terms of convection? Well, looking at the Texas panhandle here, I'm not really seeing much that would support deep convection. As I've mentioned earlier, these are mostly mid-clouds, just a lot of grunge in the mid-levels, and I'm not really seeing that low-level field coming together. And there's another look to the south where we've got a little bit of forcing along that dry line. The moisture is down there, but we're not even really seeing a stratocumulus field at this hour, so moisture is definitely hurting. Is it possible for a last-minute Hail Mary? Well, here's how the dew points look. Well, we are bringing up a little bit of moisture. 40s dew points into the Elk City, Oklahoma region. But this is well after dark. I'm just not really too sure we're going to see anything. Here's how the precip works out. And this is going to catch some of the mid-level Virga and stuff like that. Looks like it pops out a couple of showers out around Weatherford, around Clinton. But I'm pretty sure that those are going to be high-based. We can take a look at the inflow by pulling up a skew T. And you can see that it is mid-level moisture there. Very little in the lower levels. Let's go further south. Try to make sure we're not in some sort of Virga outflow. And... Yeah, there is moisture, but it is scarce, and the atmosphere is kind of capped. So a lot of the precip we will get is going to be elevated and mostly rooted in this elevated layer up at about six to 7,000 feet. But wow, look at that shear. That's just tremendous. If we had more instability, we would almost certainly be seeing tornadoes on a day like this. So this is a weather system that wants it to be May on the calendar. Unfortunately, we're about two months behind the curve. Well, elsewhere around the continent, Quebec getting battered by this old occlusion. That's way out east, and it's still bringing in this gusty northwest wind. Seeing about 19 degrees around the uh, Montreal area. Much colder up to the north. But out on the Canadian prairies, even though we have northeasterly wind, it is much warmer compared to two weeks ago. Even up, up at Fort McMurray, 41, and we go up to the north. Now we are picking up a 1050 millibar high. And during the wintertime, 1050 millibars, that really gets our attention because that usually implies a very significant polar air mass. Well, we do have that. It's minus 34, and I'm sure because of these high-pressure readings that this has some depth. However, not very much southward extent. Looks like the leading edge about like that. So the very intense cold air mostly just confined to the high Arctic. And that could come south, but there's just not a lot of volume. Even you get out towards the Mackenzie River Delta out near Inuvik, it's only minus 13, and it really warms up as you get into the 
area west of Yellowknife. So just not very much horizontal extent on this air mass. So let's see what we're looking at in terms of dynamics. We're still in a progressive weather pattern. If we isolate the jet, it's going to be running about like that. We've got a split flow pattern too. The southern split running through the El Paso area out towards Oklahoma. That's supporting that front that's down in the panhandles. And we've also got a blocking pattern out in the Atlantic. That's it right there. And that block should keep the flow kind of in place for the next week. So it's going to be transversed by small scale systems, but the large scale picture should remain fairly constant. So we run this forward. We're going to get rid of that little trough in Texas. It's going to move eastward into the southeast U.S. going into Friday and Saturday. So some rain chances going up there. Here comes round number two into northern California. Friday night into Saturday looks like maybe some rain or at least some clouds for San Francisco, Fort Bragg, Eureka, Red Bluff. And that's going to head up towards Idaho for the day Saturday. But you notice we're still under the influence of this long wave ridging, so it should s stay mild in the Rockies and Great Basin region. So there is troughing out to the west. Let me put that back where it was. I got really out of sequence here. Uh, where my? There we go. So with that troughing out to the west. We're probably going to see another wave coming into the West Coast region. There it is for Monday. Now, we still have ridging out of the central U.S., so that's going to keep things kind of fair in places like Kansas, Colorado, Louisiana. Don't have any deep systems approaching the area until maybe later next week. And that's going to be with a southwestern U.S. system right there. That's the Jet Max and very likely the fronts are going to be looking something like that late next week around Thursday. So things will probably start getting active. And since this is mid-March at the time of this map, there could be some thunderstorms. And I think with the flow being kind of stagnant, I think that may give time to charge the atmosphere with moisture. Let's go to that chart and uh, see what the moisture is doing. Now we saw yesterday it was lurking down to the south of Texas. That's it right there coming up the Rio Grande, but not enough to interact with this system we have today. So some of that moisture will be carried up into Alabama, western Florida, and then it will be out of the picture. So here we go. We're charging up the air mass again. Now it's starting to flow northward Monday into Tuesday. However, we don't have any weather systems coming into the Great Plains until Friday. So that's going to give things a chance to charge up. And you see that. See that moisture starting to increase one inch amounts over Oklahoma and Texas and Arkansas. Yeah, that's going to help prime things for Thursday and Friday. So we're going to have to watch for the possibility of storms late next week in the southern and central plains and maybe the Midwest. So let's see what comes after that. Looks like a little polar outbreak trying to push south. A little synergistic effect there with the Pacific air. And looks like maybe kind of an overrunning pattern for mid-March. And that gets towards the very end. So a little bit of a break in the central U.S. in the middle of next week. And then things getting active once again as we head into spring. And I think that's probably about all I want to cover for today. Hope you all have a great Thursday and maybe we'll see you back tomorrow for Friday's Forecast Lab. Take care and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.